Um, I want to ask this. I saw this uh, word called, what is the use of force continuum? So, so when we talk about a continuum, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, Brandon. So when we talk about a continuum, what we're trying to get away from is thinking you have to follow certain steps as an officer. And, and that is another part of this de-escalation process. You may move within that continuum to different, different techniques, different weapon systems. Um, you could go from something uh, as simple as a twist lock where you try to maintain a hold on someone. Mm -hmm. They spin out. Um, they produce a weapon, and then you may want to go, let's say they produce something like um, a, a blunt force weapon, mm -hmm. stick, something like that. Um, you may choose to engage them with your taser. So you would unholster your taser and apply the taser. If the application of the taser causes the person to drop the weapon, mm -hmm. go to the ground and comply, the thing to do there is working with your partners, effectively take the person into custody, but at the same time, verbalize and give them clear instruction and direction on what you want them to do. Turn over on your stomach. Put your hands behind your back. Keep your hands behind your back. Partner, move in and cuff. So now we've just moved from that high level where we're looking at less lethal tools. Boom, right back down to verbal. If we were to go on some type of continuum, it may require you are the, the next step because they're not necessarily in the right handcuffing position, may put you in a position where you're thinking, oh, I've got to take that next step or stay on this level. And you don't have to stay on that level. So what we're saying now is let's de-escalate and go back to verbal when it's appropriate and when it's safe, because safety is always going to be number one. The safety of the officer, and by the way, the community member as well, can we now safely take this person into custody using verbal persuasion? Now that they have had a reaction to the application of force, using the taser. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question. Um, implicit bias, and um, this may be a little out of our topic, what is the, the department doing at times? Because that, you know, from African-American perspective, sure. we feel that there's a lot of questions I get that there's just an implicit bias within the force that unfortunately isn't being combated that's causing these interactions to escalate or, or go mm -hmm. into... Can mm -hmm. you speak on anything about that? Uh, I, so here's my... Um, I, I, one thing I would want the community to, to be aware of, every member of this department has had implicit bias training. Um, for the people that grew up in L.A. This is fairly new, correct? Uh, well, within the last couple of years, yeah. yeah. Now, it's a, now it's a mandatory part of our training. I know, I know it wasn't a few years back. Though, uh, well, we had, we had similar topics that were in our human relations modules as part of the learning domain that were required by POST. But it wasn't implicit bias kind of. Exactly. It, it wasn't titled implicit yeah, bias. So. Yeah. So, uh, but we had, we had exposure to different cultures. We had, um, we, we had that discussion regarding what everyone's biases and prejudices were. We've had that in our academy for, for a long time. We had that when I went through the academy in 1990. Um, what we didn't have is a better understanding of implicit bias. So I will say this, um, most of your uh, officers that grew up in a cosmopolitan area, certainly on the West Coast, um, they have a different, I mean, it's California, it's Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the most diverse city on the planet Earth and possibly the solar system. Uh, I can't vouch for Mars because I haven't been there, but certainly on the planet Earth, this is about as diverse as it's going to get. We have some of the largest populations outside of home countries where people come here and they have their own little population, right? I mean, I can go 10 miles from here and be in little Bangladesh, Filipino town, a uh, little Armenia. I mean, it's, I know because it says on the signs right there in the city. Um, or I could go right here across the street and I could be in South Central. And I can be on Degnan and I can be right here in the Mer Park. I think what we really strive to do is treat everyone the same. And have that understanding in the, in the background of all the history that comes with it. All of us have a history. And all of us learn from that history. The LAPD has a history. And I remind people of that all the time. Even for the people that are officers now, as myself and Sergeant Enoch are, we were black before we were blue. So we have that understanding coming into this, and we're going to have that understanding afterwards. I feel it's important and incumbent upon all, every officer, every single officer that comes under this department to A, develop a better understanding, which I have, and, to, and B, be a part of developing a better understanding amongst the other officers. So I think that's where we've... we've been ahead of the curve, but certainly in terms of implicit bias and bringing in a different perspective, a fresh perspective from the community, I think it helps. 
But I think certainly in terms of the Los Angeles Police Department, we've always been uh, kind of on the forefront of having a better understanding of different cultures. Where can uh, community members report or what rights outside of getting a lawyer if you feel like, man, this officer roughed me up, he just was doing too much, or just the force I'm deeming as someone sure. that it was that was a, 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 a too forceful of a experience with an officer. Mm-hmm. What rights do I have? Do I go to the office? Because now I'm afraid to go to the police right. officer. You know, so what, what, well, what, but, what rights does a person really have? So one of the first things that I always recommend people do mm-hmm. It's asked for a supervisor. Uh, this is after, I'm saying, right up front. After, I'm saying yeah. it's kind of after the fact. And, well, let's know, say a week later. You decide, yeah. you know, I, I don't think that officer treated me right. So let's say it's a week Find later. The well, no. I, actually, I've got an even simpler solution. Log on and submit it online. So we take, uh, we have, we will take a complaint in all of the different modes. You can submit it in writing. You can call any supervisor. You can call any LAPD station. You can call our... Um, our hotline where you can comment on the service that you were provided, whether you want to provide a commendation. Because I don't think you guys would want people calling 911 just for complaints. Just oh, no, like, no, yeah, no. 911 no. is strictly for an emergency, yeah. yeah. So what we would ask is, um, you know, we have a hotline where you can both commend an officer and make a complaint. Okay. And I would encourage a community member to call that number, whether you want to make a complaint or whether you want to comment on the service. And do officers, when you are in that action and you ask for information, do they have to comply in that moment and verbally give it, give it to it after? What is, because I well, know sometimes people are like, give me your back, you know, people right, think right. like, I'm going to yell something back yeah. to you and you yeah. got to give me something. But yeah. really, what rights do we have, if you, any? You absolutely have the right to ask for the identification of the officer, especially if they're placing you under arrest. Absolutely. Do they have to give it in the arrest moment? Or, well, or, you know, because sometimes yeah. people literally think like, Give me your yeah. name. Like, right, like, right, I, yeah. You'll get yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, most oh, often man, it's going to be on the booking paperwork. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Know, but yeah. that's kind of yeah. not, not to have a smile on my face because yeah. I know there's many people probably have said I'm, I'm smiling about this. Yeah. But to be serious, well, you know, those are right. And we, we, we went yeah. across this. And, and they, they have a right. No, because uh, let, let, me, let me back this yeah, up yeah, just, yeah, a, yeah. just for a minute. Um, I mean, I rode through the city of L.A. I mean, I, you know, I'm born and raised here and here my my parents' house. Hey, I don't wear this all the time. Yeah, I don't wear this all the time. So let's just say that I'm rolling through Los Angeles, okay? Um, I have the right, just like any other citizen, to comment on the level of service that I was provided in the community. And we take that seriously. We're, we're constantly trying to, one of our big things and our core values, of our six core values, is quality through continuous improvement. We cannot improve without legitimate feedback from the community. It is impossible because we may think we're 100%. Community's got us at 50 that's a fail. I'm sorry. And we're not going to average that one out. Your, your score is 50 and you got to fix that. So that in, input, good or bad, again, I'm not going to sit here and say we only want to get the good input. We want to know when we're falling short because how are we ever going to improve if we don't know when we're falling short for the community? That feedback is important. It's vital, as a matter of fact, I would say. You might not want to ask for a badge number in the heat of things, but certainly after the situation is stabilized, and either you're going to jail, you're receiving a citation, you're being interviewed in the field, information is being exchanged. You are absolutely within your right to both comment on the service and to ask for a supervisor. After that incident, you are well within your right to comment on it either through the Internet, by phone, by fax, by correspondence. You can write a letter. There are a number of different ways we take them all, without exception.